Um, all right, so for cosine guys, um, kind of the same thing. We see that we have a, you know, our half angle. We're going to be using the half angle identities. Typically, the first thing I want to do is just figure out then if pi halves is equal to pi over 12. I'm sorry. Let's use x in this case. If my half angle is x over 12, then what is my angle? Well, you'd multiply by 2 on top and the bottom. So you get 2 pi over 12, which is equal to pi over 6. six. Okay. So now we just use the formula for cosine. But again, it's not, we've got to check is positive or negative the correct sign. So what we recognize here is that pi over 12, that is in the, that's the half angle, right? That's definitely in the first quadrant, right? So therefore, we're going to use the positive sign here. So I can say the cosine of pi over 12, again, using my half angle formula. It's not just going to use positive because it's in the first quadrant. And that's 1 plus the cosine of x, in this case, which is pi over 6, divided by 2. And we talk about the cosine of pi over 6 is really kind of the same thing as that, guys. It's just square root of 3 over 2, right? So it's 1 plus the square root of 3 over 2, divided by 2, multiplied by 2 on top and bottom. 2 plus the square root of 3 over 4. And I'll just write it like this. Just take the square root of 4, right, and then bring it out in front. So since it's the exact same type of that problem. Yes? This is your half angle. So you need to, the formula doesn't ask for the half angle. The formula asks for the angle. Again, it's better described here. I wrote the formula. Right? The formula of the half angle is the cosine of theta. So it's basically the same thing there, but. It was, yeah, it's basically the same thing. That was just a problem in radians um, or in 